Hello, Helena. It's Emily McVeigh, Executive Director of the United Way of the Lewis and Clark area. We're here for this week's United Way Partner Spotlight with Career Training Institute, or CTI. We're here with Jason and Lisa. Welcome. Thank um, you. Tell us, what is CTI? Well, thanks for having us uh, today. CTI is a nonprofit employment and training program that serves Lewis and Clark, Broadwater, and Jefferson counties. Um, 2020 is our 40th year in business of serving that Tri-County area. Um, we're located in the Family Investment Center, downtown Helena on Last Chance Gulch. That's a 12,000 square foot facility that houses our offices, classrooms, and a 20 station computer lab. Uh, currently, we administer 10 separate job training programs, each with its own eligibility criteria and performance standards. And those programs are primarily funded through state and federal contracts. Um, we also uh, do get some private money, but and of course, we're a partner with United Way. Yeah, you guys do a lot of things. <laughs> You're very busy down there. Yeah. Um, so, what are the demographics of the people that you work with? What kinds of people come to your classes and your training programs? So, so our target po population um, focuses on people who are low income and those who are struggling um, with barriers to employment. We work with people 16 and older mm -hmm. from all walks of life. Um, some people may have advanced um, training or post-secondary education, and some may have um, dropped out of high school and are working on their high set, previously known as the GED. Um, some people may have extensive work history and are looking to re-enter the workforce, while others um, have never been in the workforce. So in 2000, or excuse me, in 18, or 1983, <laughs> 40 years ago, CTI was established as a displaced homemaker center. Mm -hmm. um, we still administer those funds, but throughout the four decades, we have um, administered dozens of programs. Um, grants come and go, eligibility changes. So we like to, um, not get too into the weeds about what who our eligible population is because it changes, number one, and we would hate for somebody in the community to think, well, I can't qualify for those services. Um, so for example, a couple of years ago, we received COVID funding, and that helps people, um, that funding helps people with training who may not necessarily be considered economically disadvantaged. I think the important thing um, to emphasize is that we try to meet people where they're at. Everybody comes into CTI from a, a, at a different place and they have different needs and so a lot of what we do is um, meeting with them, um, focusing on, always focusing on employment or getting training to become a more qualified a, a worker for, for a business, but um, we customize those services for each person. So if somebody, you know, no two people are the same, so somebody might, na might need like a paid internship because they have the education, but they don't have the on-the-job sk um, skills, um, whereas somebody else may, their first step may be where they need to get their high school equivalency or GED, and so we will work with our partners, the adult education program, so that they can continue to move forward. Well, a lot of people might just know you as the, per the group that works with people that are on the SNAP program mm -hmm. or helping people get off of SNAP and into the workforce, but mm -hmm. you guys provide help with getting your CDL, you, pro you know, exactly. help with construction. You're, you know, it's not just computer skills, it's no. kind of it, it, it gamut really of workforce is. It's really assistance. what the individual, and, and particularly doing that career coaching so that that person knows that the training that they're looking for is actually going to meet a need in the local area because we don't want to train folks if there's no jobs available. So there are a lot of jobs for truck drivers and health care and even retail and hospitality right now. There's over a thousand jobs in Helena. So our part in the community is to help to prepare those folks for, the, for that employment, whether it's their first job or maybe they're looking at a promotion. Well, and I'm sure that has changed significantly over the years mm -hmm. <laughs> as has. computers have become more prominent. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people who have gone to do 
Excel training, <laughs> which yeah. I, I should probably do. Um, <laughs> I should probably come down and do <laughs> some Excel training. Um, you know, because that mm -hmm. becomes more and more part of your day-to-day -day work is mm -hmm. on the job, you know, on the computer, doing spreadsheets, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I'm sure that wasn't the case 40 years mm -hmm. ago because no. we didn't have that 40 years ago. Right, right. So, yeah. yeah, you guys are keeping up with the times and making sure people are trained up as yeah. things. Um, so what other services do you provide to people that are coming in for job coaching, job searching? So, so yeah, so it's, it's uh, somebody comes in and, and if we decide they're a good fit for one of our programs, then there's a fair amount of assessment, vocational assessment that's done. And um, then that helping them with the career awareness, career coaching. Some people know exactly what they want to do, but then there are other folks who just really aren't sure you know, where do they fit in in the economy. So it's helping them work through that, but then designing a plan to figure out, um, so what do we need to get this person where they want to be? So somebody, when they're eligible for one of our programs and they enroll, they um, work with a case manager who develops that plan mm -hmm. with them and, and then works closely with them from that point forward to provide that intensive case management and support through their journey. So it might be taking some of our classes, or it might be maybe they need to brush up on soft skills. Um, maybe they are college bound and they, they, want, they want to figure out that process of how to enroll at Helena College. Um, they may get, be a candidate for like a paid internship. Um, there's a lot of short-term classes that are available, and we would really do encourage short-term training because um, People can't really afford to be in school for four years anymore. You know, they have bills to pay, rent to pay, utilities to pay. So um, we want to get them on their feet as quick as possible with some good skills. So it again, it's customized to each individual. No two people are the same. I would be remiss though if I didn't speak about our computer lab. Um, actually, last week we just received notice that we received a pretty sizable um, donation from the AT&T Foundation to upgrade all of our computer equipment. So that's great. great. Um, right, so we have a teacher on staff who has a menu of workshops. I think she's at 35 right now, and it's everything from computer technology to the Microsoft suite, financial literacy. Um, we also do mock interviewing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how to put together a resume and yeah. fill out applications. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. New yeah. computers are always important. Right, right. So well, we have to keep up our technology yeah. because that's we're training people for the workforce. So. Right, yeah. yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, and I was going to say, I meet people sometimes and they tell me what they do for a job and I say, I didn't even know that was a job. Right. Mm -hmm. So the fact that people don't know what they want to do, sometimes they don't even know what jobs are available out exactly. there in the world. So it's important to help people even understand mm -hmm. what kinds of things they could be doing. And you know, mm -hmm. since COVID, we've uh, partnered with MBAC and um, Teleworks USA to provide remote worker training. Mm -hmm. So we've had quite a few people go mm -hmm. through that because that's something that really didn't exist, wasn't really prevalent right. before that. It's growing significantly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so how do you work with employers in the community to help people? So, um, you know, one of the things is just staying in touch with employers to understand what their skills, the skill sets they're looking for, what soft skills they're, they're expecting. Um, we can work with an employer on an on-the-job training arrangement where they hire somebody and we're able to reimburse uh, some of the wages or in a different situation, a paid internship where we have um, someone who's basically entering the workforce or changing jobs and they don't have those skills, but they are, um, it's just a time limited situation where they um, have a training plan and the employer is willing to be their sponsor, but there's no obligation for the employer to hire that person. Um, but they can, as a result, get some of those skills to put on their resume and get a good reference and then move on to um, competitive employment. Lisa also uh, mentioned mock interviewing. So we have a list of employers in town that sit on a mock interview team um, for the people that are in our class. 
That's great. Yeah. That's a yeah. good skill because mm -hmm. people get so nervous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we just we're doing some interviews right now, and I know we always give them a lot of leeway because how nervous people yeah, get. Right. And, right. Yeah. Um, so what kind of existing partnerships do you guys have in the community? I know you guys work with a lot of people to make all your programs run. Well, we, I, I mentioned we are in the Family Investment Center. That's actually a Helena housing owned mm -hmm. building and we provide targeted um, case management to people who are in housing or um, sec local Section 8. Um, we have a partnership with Boyd Andrew. Um, we have done the job development and retention for the pre-release center since its inception, I think in 1998. Um, yeah, um, in Youth Build, uh, our Youth Build program, we partner with uh, Habitat for Humanity and they provide us with a work site to train the students, but also with a classroom um, because they prepare to go on to the work site um, and do a lot of hands-on in the in the construction classroom before they're actually on the work site. So, so that's a wonderful partnership for us. Um, Helena College is another. Um, we refer a lot of our clients to Helena College for training. The adult education program. Um, they do service. the remediation and, and, and high set testing, but job service as well. Um, we're a member of Helena Resource Advocates and uh, the Capital Area Workforce System as well. So we work with all of our community partners and that's important because if there's something that, there's a need that, that one of our clients has that we can't meet, um, the case managers try to find that resource in the community. So it takes a village. It right? sure does. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we get those calls all day long. Mm -hmm. What do we do, who do we call? Yeah. We just refer them back out to the people that can help them mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, keep those yeah, keep those relationships going. Um, so if a person's interested in participating in any of the CTI programs, how do they get a hold of you guys? So we have an online application. It's a pre-application. It's basically a screening tool so we can try to figure out what, some, what program somebody might be eligible for. And they may be eligible for more than one, um, but that's at, at www.ctihelena.org. Um, they can fill it out and then have it emailed into um, the front desk and they will be called within three days and if, if it looks like uh, what we have, the services that they need to move forward, then we'll set up a meeting with the case manager and then they can um, basically have, it'll be an orientation session and information. And after that point, um, decide whether or not the path forward. So, because some people will come in and get information, and it may not be the time. They may may not be ready to commit to the program. Um, um, but we also, you can also walk into CTI. We're at 347 North Last Chance Gulch, and we have those pre-applications at the front desk as well. And you know, I mentioned um, we'd rather people approach us and s let us determine if they're eligible. And if they are not eligible, we have mm -hmm. quite a seasoned staff who don't let them leave without some some form of referral somewhere mm -hmm. or, or some help, so. Well, and I think you guys do have a good connection with the job service. Mm -hmm. We do. Scooch them on down right. the road to the job service. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I do, I feel like the building maybe blends in on last <laughs> chance a little bit. I don't feel like our building blends in, but people always say, oh, I've never seen your building. I'm like, it's bright blue with a big mural <laughs> on the side. But, <laughs> um, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like CTI just kind of blends a little. You know, and so like people have to kind of notice it. Like yeah. you're right there on last chance. I um, always say we're the same side of the block as, well, Bert and Ernie's. I know I'm gonna say right. that. Right. <laughs> old Bert and Ernie's are for old, Old timers like me, it's the old American Federal Savings and Loan. Right, I always so. have to go, it's the old whatever. Yeah, I know. yeah so. <laughs> So yeah, you're really right there, pretty prominent on Last Chance Gulch, mm -hmm. but I think people might just walk right by it and never even really notice that you're there. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, so, and you don't want them to go on that door on Last Chance because that's the classroom, and so you want to maybe right. kind of go around to the back side. Right, we kind of funnel everybody. Looks like yeah. the old bank yep, pull right. through. Yep, <laughs> off of Jackson, <laughs> yep. right. Yep, yeah, so just if they need to find you, go mm -hmm. around the back side, looks like the bank pull through, mm -hmm. go on the front door. Yep. Yep, the nice ladies back there will mm -hmm. connect you to the things you need to know. Right. Um, anything else before we sign off? Uh, I just want to say we're pretty proud of being able to 
provide services for 40 years. I, I think mm -hmm. that's quite an accomplishment. Um, the beginning of the program year for several of our programs was July 1st, so we have um, many openings for mm -hmm. people. So um, whether you're a business looking for help or an individual, mm -hmm. you know, make contact with us. Great. I, you know, I just like to add, I think this is an interesting time um, in our economy, but with over a thousand jobs open in Helena, there's just a lot of opportunity for, for folks, whether they're just getting started or maybe um, it's, maybe they feel like it's time to change, um, shift gears and do something different. But there's training available, there's resources available to help support that training and, and we're here. Great. We're here to help. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. It's Thank good you. to see you guys. You too. All right. Thank you, Helena. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>